So your research supervisor has told you to write a reflexive diary as part of your qualitative research. But what does that even mean? In this video, I'll show you how to write a reflexive diary to enhance your study's depth and transparency. I'm going to break down what a reflexive diary is, why it's important, how to structure it, and some tips for effective writing based on my experience as a qualitative researcher. A reflexive diary is a qualitative researcher's journal where you document your thoughts, your emotions, your biases, and your decisions throughout the research process. And reflexivity refers to that researcher's awareness of the effect both on the process and the outcomes of the research. Importantly, as qualitative researchers, we would say that we don't necessarily remain outside of the subject matter. Our presence in whatever form will invariably influence the study. And a reflexive diary helps acknowledge and account for these influences. And that strengthens the integrity of the research. Being explicit in this reflective practice is important because it bridges that gap between this conceptual abstract thoughts of the research and actually the hands-on practicalities of doing the research in real life. So here are four reasons why keeping a reflexive diary is so important. Firstly, it enhances transparency. It makes your thought processes visible and it strengthens the trustworthiness of your research. Secondly, it helps manage bias. By acknowledging your influence on the study and the participants, you can minimise the risk of that bias. Thirdly, it recognises that two-way influence. So not only do researchers affect the study, but our participants also shape us and our researchers' understanding of what we're looking at. And fourthly, it supports your data analysis. Your reflections can reveal patterns in the data and shape how you interpret your findings. There is no one size fits all approach. You can just type your thoughts onto a Word document or you can write it down physically in a journal or any other way, as long as you're keeping in lines with the general data protection principles. If you're a new researcher, then here is a simple structure to get you started. First, think about your biases and any assumptions you may have. So what beliefs or past experiences might be shaping your perceptions? Documenting these during the research process helps reduce bias. Second, think about methodological reflections. So are your research methods working as planned? Do you need to adapt anything? Third, write about the impact on analysis. So how do your reflections shape the way that you interpret the data? And fourthly, that reciprocal influence. So how has engaging with the participants and the research process changed your own perspectives or assumptions? If you're more experienced, then you might just want to focus it down on these two key questions, which are simply, what assumptions, if any, do I hold about the research topic? And then secondly, what values and life experiences might shape how I read and interpret the data? If you want an example of what you might document in a reflexive diary entry from a study that I did that was looking around understanding student feedback, then please check out that text because I've put it in the video description below. So getting these thoughts out of my head and onto paper or onto a screen helps me acknowledge where I may have some bias with my analysis. And being aware of that means I can be mindful to try and avoid those pitfalls. So here are my top three tips for keeping a useful reflexive diary. One, write regularly. Try and reflect before and after every research activity while the details are still fresh. Be honest, your diary is for you, so don't filter your thoughts too much. Seek external perspectives, engage in peer debriefing and discussions, particularly with your supervisors who can help challenge your reflections and your assumptions. So that's how you write a reflexive diary. By keeping one, you'll not only strengthen your research, but you'll also grow as a researcher and a reflective practitioner. If you're wanting a bit more of a breakdown on another common qualitative research challenge about sample size, then please check out this next video on the difference between data saturation and information power. Hope to see you there and good luck with your research.